Hello everyone, today we are going to go over IXL A1, Identify Steps of the Scientific Method. Uh, before we do some practice problems, I want to go over the six steps of the scientific method that IXL specifically talks about. So those six items are identify the question, develop the hypothesis, test the hypothesis, analyze the data, draw a conclusion, and communicate the findings. So, for the first one, identify the question. So, the first step in a scientific investigation is to identify the question that you want to answer. When you identify the question, you use your observations and prior knowledge to ask a question that focuses on a problem. So, effectively, in this part, all you're doing is just trying to figure out what's the question? What are you trying to solve? The second part is developing the hypothesis. So after you've identified your question, you need to develop your hypothesis, which is a possible explanation or answer to a question. You develop the hypothesis by proposing an explanation and predicting what you expect to observe if the explanation is correct. So effectively in this step, all you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what do you think the answer to your question is. Part three, you have to test the hypothesis. So a hypothesis is a possible explanation. To decide if there is support for the explanation, you need to test the hypothesis. You can test your hypothesis in many ways. You can make a series of observations or design and carry out an experiment. So in this phase, all you're doing is you're trying to figure out ways to prove that you're right. Next part is analyzing the data. So any method that you use to test your hypothesis will require that you gather and then analyze data. When you analyze the data, you examine the data and look for patterns. The patterns that you look for depend on the predictions of your hypothesis. So effectively in this step, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out what is the information that you collected, what is that information telling you. Step five is drawing a conclusion. So after you analyze your data, you use the results to draw a conclusion by deciding if the results support your hypothesis. If the results match the predictions of your hypothesis, then you can conclude that the results support your hypothesis. So basically at this part, you're trying to figure out, you got your data, what's that data telling you? That's pretty much all you're doing here. Uh, last part is communicate the findings. So whether or not your results support the hypothesis, it is important that you communicate the findings by telling others about your experiment. You can tell others about the question, hypothesis, experiment, observation, results, and the conclusions. You can also use graphs and diagrams. So in this step, what you're trying to do is you've done the experiment, you've answered the question hopefully, and now you're trying to tell other people, what did you figure out? So uh, as a very quick um, refresher, I'm just going to go over the six steps and kind of go over the question that usually pops up in my mind whenever I talk about this. So for identifying the question, uh, the main thing I kind of think of is what are you trying to solve? For developing the hypothesis, what do you think is the answer? For testing the hypothesis, how will you know that you're right? For analyzing the data, what information did you collect? For drawing conclusion, what did your data tell you? And for communicate, who will you tell? So in this next part, we're just going to go over some more examples of scientific method and it being used in practice and some more relatable examples to you. So the, one of the things that a lot of my students typically talk about is Minecraft. And one of the questions that they seem to ask and wonder about is while they're farming and while they're trying to get certain like drops for certain things, one of the questions that they typically ask is where is the best drop rate for XX item? XX item being whatever item you want to put in there because I honestly don't know any items off the top of my head. So if you're trying to figure out the best drop rate for an item, the logical hypothesis that you would probably have is that you think, oh, this place might have a better drop rate or that place might have a better drop rate. So your hypothesis will be like, best place for whatever item it is, is in the desert. 
Um, when you're testing the hypothesis, you want to make sure that you are going to not just the desert, but you probably want to go to different locations to see if other areas have a better drop rate. So when you're testing it out, you probably want to try farming in a desert, farming in a savanna, farming in the plains, and I'm assuming you will probably take out a monster a certain number of times. And in this one, we're saying you're going to take out a certain monster that can drop the item 50 times. Um, analyzing the data, um, what you would do in this step is you would collect the data. You would figure out how many times that item dropped over how many times the monster was defeated. And you'll be like, oh, in 50 uh, times of defeating whatever monster it was you fought, you got 10 drops in the desert. You got 14 of those drops you wanted in the savannah, and you got six drops of that particular item in the plains. Based off of this information, you would conclude that, oh, it looks like Savannah seems to have a higher drop rate. So the best place is potentially the Savannah for whatever item that item was. And then when you communicate with people, you would say the best place for XX item is Savannah based off me farming this place, farming this monster 50 times. And now, branching into the realm of movies, uh, one common question that people tend to ask whenever they watch movies is asking, you know what, what's the best movie of all time? Or sometimes they'll be like, what's your favorite movie? But um, for making this a little bit easier to digest, what's the best movie of all time? So, um, if the question is what's the best movie of all time, you need to figure out what you think the best movie of all time is. So I think the movie that happened to make the most money is the best. Uh, that's basically what highest gross means. That basically means like the most ticket sales off that movie. So when you're testing a hypothesis, uh, in this particular example, uh, what you could do is you could go to different websites to maybe check out the amount of money that particular movie made. Uh, one example in here would be uh, using Box Office Mojo because it does have a lot of that statistical data on the website. When you're analyzing the data, you can analyze the data based off domestic sales, which is sales in the U.S. You could also do worldwide sales, which is basically sales across the entire world. Uh, the information here currently is posted from worldwide data, and apparently the three highest grossing movies were Avengers Endgame, Avatar, and Titanic. So based off this information, one person would conclude that the best movie of all time is Avengers Endgame because that's the one that made the most movie. And then when you want to communicate that information to other people, you would be like, yeah, the best movie is Avengers Endgame, followed by Avatar, and then followed by Titanic because that is the order in which the movies made the most amount of money.